Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nadia and this is This Week in Sex. So This Week in Sex, pop star Taylor Swift is clapping back at slut shamers. Taylor Swift says she has had enough and it is time for the sexism and the slut shaming to stop. Taylor Swift has taken a lot of commentary on her romantic life. A lot of people say because she's in the limelight she should expect that, but she definitely cops a lot more flag than most pop stars when it comes to her love life. And this is something that is explored in the Netflix documentary about her life where Taylor is seen talking about the pressure that of just being put under the limelight and having her every move scrutinized. And with the new Britney Spears documentary out, this has really brought sort of a renewed focus onto the way we treat young women in the media. And Taylor Swift was quick to point out that in one of the more recent episodes of Netflix, Ginny and Georgia, the character of Ginny is seen saying to her single mom that she goes through men faster than Taylor Swift. Taylor did not miss a beat clapping back. Writing on Twitter, 2010 called and it was its lazy, deeply sexist joke back. How about we stop degrading hardworking women by defining this horseshit as funny? The tweet, very unsurprisingly, quickly went viral with many Swifties chiming in to say that they agreed with Taylor Swift that it was a very sexist, outdated kind of humor and that the show needed to apologize for slut shaming and disrespecting women for daring to just have a romantic life. Now, as for my thoughts on this, I am personally not a Taylor Swift fan. Never have been. Her music is just not my groove. However, I completely agree with her stance on this issue. Women have historically been slut shamed for having just as many relationships, if not far fewer relationships, as their male co-stars. It's frequently women's love lives and more specifically women's sex lives or what we are basically determining from the outside that we think we can guess about these women's sex lives that are put under scrutiny and that are supposed to say something about their character. And this really is something that we need to leave behind in the past. I myself have witnessed slut shaming online for writing about my sex life as a woman and it's gross. People saying that you are somehow less worthy or you're less desirable or men will want you less because you've had a bunch of casual sex is deeply sexist. We know that pretty much since the beginning of time, men who've had lots of casual sex and lots of partners have been celebrated. So we need to stop treating women like they're just in a completely different category of human. And we need to be degraded for doing the exact same thing that men have been doing like forever. So I am with Taylor Swift here, but as always, I'm keen to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think? Do you think this is potentially an overreaction or do you agree with all the Swifties out there that this is slut shaming and it needs to stop? Also this week in sex, a very disturbing report has been released by an online pharmacy who found that searches for emergency contraception and STI treatments have surged by over 40% since lockdown took place. And this seems to suggest that while most people are getting a lot better with their personal hygiene in terms of hand washing and mask wearing and social distancing, somewhere we seem to have completely completely let the ball drop since we've gone into quarantine is in the sex department. People are just not being safe. And this report actually has some experts worried that this may indicate a trend that we might start to see over the next few months where people are basically just so desperate for human connection and specifically for sexual connection because of all of the isolation that we've had to experience in lockdown that we are rushing into things without taking proper proportions. And this is something that I touched on in last week's This Week in Sex, where I spoke about the fact that uh, a lot of experts were talking about this phenomenon called touch hunger, which was basically where people who've been locked down on their own for a long time haven't been able to just physically reach out and touch another person, even if that's just shaking someone's hand or hugging someone. And those sorts of things, of course, have been 
essentially avoided by most people in a social environments. So people are craving that intimacy and we're craving sexual intimacy as well. And while I absolutely think it is so normal to crave sexual intimacy, and I personally think it's very difficult to go without any kind of sex, I think absolutely use your vibrator. And if you aren't in a relationship, just get one friends with benefits person that you can kind of trust for a regular hookup. Don't be going and having casual sex with tons of people because it's not a safe time to do that. Have that one person that you can trust and stick to that one person until things are a bit safer. But please, please, please guys, use contraception. It is so important. Just because we are in the middle of a pandemic does not mean we should be letting the ball drop in other areas. We are potentially gonna see, and it's already been predicted, a lot of post-pandemic babies because of all the unprotected sex that's been going on while we've been in lockdown but also lots of STIs. So if you want to prevent unwanted pregnancy and unwanted STIs, because who wants an STI? Then please, please wrap up, use protection. If you are having lesbian sex or if you are having non-penetrative sex and you're just having oral sex, please use dental dams. Just make sure that you are protected so that you can have enjoyable, safe sex. And last but certainly not least, This Week in Sex in GQ magazine, writer Sable Young penned a very interesting piece that caught my eye. And the piece was called, Please Wash Your Hands Before Sex. And in the piece, she talks about her experiences as a woman and how few men tend to wash their hands before having sex and before coming into contact with women's genitals. And she talks about the dangers of this, about spreading bacteria and how for all our focus on hand washing at the moment and getting our hands super clean and being hygienic and using Purell and all of that jazz, that we, again, like I mentioned in the last story, seem to be dropping the ball in the bedroom department. In the article, Yong references a CDC report that found that 69% of men did not wash their hands regularly and hoped that the pandemic was going to make this statistic change. She also goes on to say, if you're thinking, wait, I've never heard this from my partners. It must not really be an issue. I'm here to tell you that's not necessarily the case. I don't want to make assumptions of how communicative you are with your partners about genital health, but I do know that many women often feel societal pressure to downplay their genital discomfort monthly or otherwise. Continuing, I cannot stress enough how attractive it is to show, not tell your partner that you're considerate of their well-being and pleasure. It can foster a sense of trust, which allows for greater vulnerability between both of you, which in turn leads to very good sex. And that can absolutely begin with the shit you should have already been doing, like washing your hands. I would personally recommend that both of you actually take a shower before sex. It is such a great and sexy way to get clean, practice pre-sex sexual hygiene, and you can also get down and dirty in the shower. It acts as fantastic foreplay. Practicing good sexual hygiene absolutely can be sexy, and it can be a sign that you really care about your partner's well-being and that you have respect for them. And that is always attractive in a potential sexual partner. So I think that's a great note to end on. Wash your hands, wear a mask and practice safe consensual sex. Let me know your thoughts on these stories this week as always and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and you'd like to see more This Week in Sex videos. Don't forget to hit the notification bell as well because that lets you know when these videos go live every Monday bringing you the sexiest stories on the internet and I will see you next week in sex.